Alone Together by Liliana Gomez. Scene one, spring. Um, hello. Wait, no, that was fine. Hello, welcome to my digital video diary in which I record my digital thoughts and physical thoughts, you, you know, just thoughts, digital and physical and otherwise. Um, <clears throat> yeah, okay, um, yeah, okay, whatever. Hi, my name is Hazel Maybe. I'm 15 years old and I live in good old Nashville, Tennessee, y'all. Yeah, um, I just moved here from Anaheim. Honestly, a tornado and a pandemic two weeks after moving in. Not great, but that's besides the point. I wanted to make this video diary to kind of give a glimpse into what's going on in my life right now. I know a lot of people are doing this, but you know, um, what's one more person, right? <laughs> uh, and also, I, mean, I have something other people don't. While the general public is often their self-quarantine alone, I've got not only my mom, my dog, but also a couple of friends, two of them at the moment. We share this body, but not our brains because of this thing called dissociative identity disorder. I don't wanna get all sciencey about it, but it's just that me and two other people in my head seem like one person, but are actually not the same at all. And see, I act different from Alice, Alice acts different from Blake, and Blake <laughs> acts way different than both of us. We're all seeing different things in this really weird time right now, but we're getting through it in our own ways and it's all gonna be okay. At least that's what Alice says. But right now, I, Hazel, have been doing a lot of reading and drawing and stuff and it's been awesome. They pick up a stack of books and sketchbooks. Like, really awesome. I think I've read more in the past two weeks than I did all of last year which is kind of sad. Anyways, yeah, I think my mom is coming home soon, so I should finish this up. But I just want to get started. Uh, I don't know who's going to talk tomorrow or even if I can be able to convince them to talk on camera, but let's keep our fingers crossed. Well, here's Hazel signing off. They wave a goodbye, light shift, and Alice enters. The two look at each other, nervous, but taking comfort in each other's presence. Hazel exits. Theme two, summer. Alice opens a notebook and begins writing. Hello. Um, so I know that Hazel is doing that whole video diary thing, but um, I don't know, not really my style. I mean, if you think about it, even if I did take a video of myself, it's not like you'd see the real me. You know? Okay, well, anyways, hi, I'm Alice. I'm one of the others, as Hazel calls us, which is it's kind of rude to me. I mean, like, you're an other too, aren't you? Like, what are we other than? Okay, whatever. But, um, yeah, I am one of those head people, the imaginary friends that in 11th grade. Yeah, it sucks. I hate it. Uh, I hate being basically someone else, but also... Like trying to be myself, but also technically not anyone at all if you like look at it like. She winces, pulling her hand away from the page and shaking or holding it. She sticks the pin in her book, closes it, sits down, opens it again, and resumes writing. Long story short, I am here to write about myself so Hazel can get to know me better considering we aren't really at the point of talking really well in our head yet. It's kind of exhausting writing everything I want to say to her instead of, you know, being able to say it, but it could be worse. I really do like writing. Writing's fun. Um, I also like playing piano and knitting and reading and... Oh, I love doing makeup. It's just like, it's so relaxing, like putting the powders and stuff on and watching it all come together little by little. Hazel doesn't really like it really, which I get, not everyone's style, especially the really like out there stuff I like to wear. 
But like, it's nice when I'm out front controlling the body and stuff and I can wear and do and say whatever I want. I mean, it's not actually whatever I want. We set boundaries. Actually, that's, that's kind of the point of this whole thing, this journal and trying to talk to each other and whatnot. It's also that we can make rules for the body as a whole, the system, as they call it. For example, I have... <laughs> I have a crush on this one guy, Elliot. Oh my god. He's so sweet and smart and like has really pretty blonde hair and ah, just all of it and okay so like the body the, the system has been friends with him for years i mean like literally as long as i can remember but as time goes on and i'm starting to actually become my own person like he's starting to feel like not just another guy i guess Ugh, i sound like i'm 12 years old point is I really like him a lot. Problem is, I, uh, I'm the only one in the system that likes him like that. Everyone else is either older or younger or into girls, and it's really annoying. Because, like, of course I want to date him. Like, that's, like, such a dream. But it's not like I can just ask him out or anything, like, without making Hazel uncomfortable or... Or like telling him about the system, like, God, I hate this. I can't talk to anyone about it. The most support I really have is everyone inside the system, which is nice enough, but like, I want to be my own person. Like, I want my own friends and my own problems, and I don't like this stupid blind body. She yanks off her glasses, the same ones Hazel wears and looks like she's about to throw them, but settles on putting them on the ground. I'm sorry. This is mean. I, I know I have every right to be upset. I know, I know all of this. But being upset never changes anything. My therapist says the goal with therapy for the system is to become one person, integration. And I'd love to be one normal person. Like, don't get me wrong, but I can't help but want to be myself too. Like I want to know what it's like to ask out Elliot and make my own friend group and all of that without the approval of like three other people and the tedious writing and journals and making video diaries and whatever. I'm just tired. I guess I'll end this here. But I will talk to you about this, Hazel. This is important to me. Please listen. She closes the book and grabs the glasses, staring painfully at them before exiting the scene. Scene three, fall. Alice and Hazel sit down together or lay on the bed or something. Hazel is on their phone, texting and laughing while Alice draws or knits something creative. Hazel laughs at something on their phone, then sits up, and turns to Alice. Oh, um, did I show you Elliot's new girlfriend yet? Hazel continues talking while Alice looks at the picture on their phone. She's so sweet and adorable and seriously perfect for him. She just looks like me, but prettier. Hazel takes their phone back, distraught. Look, I know this is probably still sensitive for you, but we're his friends. We should be able to talk about him at some point without everything turning into some competition or something. You never even met this girl. Besides, you're beautiful. No way is she prettier than you. Well, it's not like anyone would ever get to see what I really look like. Hazel attempts to get her to look at them again, placing a hand on her shoulder gently. She shrugs away and stands up, starting to pace around. I hate this. I'll never be able to look in the mirror and like see my smile or the details of my eyes. I can't play with my hair when I'm bored or know what life is like without glasses. Like, can you imagine that? Alice. No, you can't. How could you? You 
make every single decision as if you're the only one of us. It, it, it's like you're pretending they don't even exist. Well, guess what? We do. You're stuck with us and you always will be. Whether or not we, we want to be here, so at least try acting like you care. At least try letting me wear clothes I like, or let me go out on a date with a guy, just one. I hate looking how we look and doing things that we do, but I suck it up. Yet all of us have to change our lives around you the moment you're even slightly uncomfortable. Hazel contemplates more while Alice sits on the floor, tired and upset. Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm trying my best, but I know it's not enough. And you have every right to be upset. I understand. And I really do want to be better at this. It's just that's so hard dealing with school and drama and my parents and a pandemic, all the things normal kids deal with, but also wondering like, should I tell my friends about us? Should I tell my parents? Who can I trust and who needs to know and who can go without it? And yeah, part of me wants to pretend you all don't exist because we already work together to pretend that we're all one person so maybe I'm just making it all up, and if I try hard enough, I'll be normal again. But you're right. It isn't fair, and it's not an excuse, and I'm so sorry. As Hazel was talking, Alice got up and walked over to them. Now she's the one with her hand on their shoulder. You don't have to forgive me. I'm not expecting you to, but... I was wondering if you'd like to help me send a message to Elliot about us. Hazel finally looks at Alice, and she abruptly hugs them, shocked and overjoyed. Um, so that means yes? <laughs> of course it does. Scene four, winter. Hazel and Alice sit in front of their phone. Alice types, Hazel looks over her shoulder, not intently, but just seeing what she's doing. Elliot is on the other side of the stage, playing a video game. Alice and Hazel murmur to each other. Alice taps the phone one more time and looks worriedly at it, while Elliot's own phone buzzes and he pauses his game to look at it. Hi. So, there isn't an easy way to say this, but... I love you and trust you with my life pretty much. So here goes. There's this thing called dissociative identity disorder. It used to be called multiple personality disorder. Maybe you've heard of it, I don't know. But I wanted to let you know that I have it. I'm sure you get how it works, but Basically, the person talking to you right now isn't Hazel. It's one of the other people who shares the same body as Hazel. My name is Alice. It's nice to officially meet you. Hi. You get it, right? How do I know this is real? How do you know? You get why I'm so reluctant to believe you, right? Hazel picks up the phone as Alice sinks to the floor and curls up. Blake enters now, standing behind Hazel and Alice, but not saying or doing anything yet. No, not really. This isn't like you. <laughs> What happens to all those times we promised to be there for each other? I I know we're states apart now, but the distance shouldn't change a thing, especially not now. I just, what is it that you don't get? This isn't a real thing. You're making it up. I just know it. I can't believe I didn't realize you could have gone crazy and killed someone and I wouldn't have even known why. You need to be in therapy or like a, a psych ward or something.
Alice sinks into the background. You know me. Better than anyone, actually. If I were supposed to be locked away somewhere, you would know it, except I'm not supposed to. I'm still the same person I ever was. If anything, you should be able to understand me better, but I get it. Maybe you've changed since the last time I saw you. But I haven't. That's for sure. I think we just need some time apart. You should be alone with each other for a while before I get involved. So just don't talk to me until some time has passed, okay? An uncomfortable moment passes. Then Hazel walks up to him. What did he say? More of the same. He asked us not to talk to him again for a bit. Should we tell Alex? She's unreachable. I think we'll have to go back to journals and video diaries for a while. Well, at least I can still talk to you. That's all we need, huh? <laughs> Just each other. Yeah. Feel like playing some Minecraft tonight? You know it. <laughs> we have an Ender Dragon to beat. 